Jupyter notebooks in the enterprise can be a challenge. Why? Because we use them in ways that they weren't originally intended, right? It's exploratory data science tool. We use it as a development environment now, and we actually use it as a workstation and we generate visuals and other things in it. So if we think about how Jupyter notebooks started out, they were something I ran on my local machine designed for data scientists and people that write code, but weren't professional software developers in most cases, and pretty straightforward. The environment is the developer laptop. Uh, and all the graphing and other stuff happened inside the notebook because it was an exploratory tool and you could send it to somebody a notebook and everything ran inside the notebook. Uh, we moved past that. If you think of something like Dash or some of the other tools, uh, you can actually generate external web-based reports. These are actually viewers inside the notebook, but to my mind, something like Dash runs a lot better in a web browser. So now I actually run code in my Jupyter notebook. I get a whole bunch of output in it, and I end up with a second window with a mini web server running on my laptop. And I want to share that with people. So now it goes into GitHub. Um, the next phase is I really want to get access to corporate data. I didn't want to just download it, you know, like off a hugging face or something or uh, our world in data. And so I actually do a containerized environment. A good example of this is the NVIDIA AI Workbench. Um, that is a tool that actually uses the Jupyter Notebook as an IDE to do data science work, but it also lets you deploy web apps and deploy using Docker Compose, a set of services inside of it. So you can think of the Jupyter Notebook as just being one part of an ecosystem that you can run on your laptop. Um, and then you can tunnel out to go get data from your cloud or your business data or your APIs, right? Um, the next phase of this is actually, oh man, I don't want people running this on their local machine. I don't want the data coming down to the local box. We have data sensitive data. And also I want to give them way more capacity, maybe GPUs. In this case, we actually take that container and we push it off to a server somewhere. Because Jupyter Notebooks are single tenant, everybody needs their own set of containers. So whatever I was running locally, the reason I containerized it is I can package that whole thing off and shove it off on a server. Again, NVIDIA AI Workbench is a great example. There are a bunch of others. In this case, I don't need the tunnel to the data, but I do need tunnels for all of the web servers, unless uh, now if I use traffic or something, I might only need one. But the idea is your laptop or desktop now needs to be able to tunnel out to the Jupyter Notebook and any of the other tools in the containerized environment. And this is actually the hard thing to deploy because of the single tenant nature of the Jupyter Notebook and that workspace. Everybody gets their own, and so you need to be able to provision and deprovision those. The last one of these that looks like I'll get time to put in is the, using Jupyter Notebooks, converting those using something like paper mill and then doing batch jobs with it, you wouldn't actually may or may not run that in a containerized environment, but basically it would run out in the server or cloud somewhere and it would have access to the data lake, the data stores, and the APIs. So that's the evolution of Jupyter Notebooks in the enterprise.